Hey folks, I have a riddle for you. What kind of tech is silvery and metallic, costs around 10,000 bucks or more, and is critical to a photographer or videographer who's dealing with really high bitrate cameras? You might be thinking like a Mac Pro or something like that. It's this little stack of memory cards. CF Express Type B are the cutting edge fastest and in my opinion, the future in terms of memory card formats. They have a really high you know, theoretical maximum in terms of their overall speed and their capacity, but they're still struggling to keep up with the latest and greatest technology. As in any electronic system, your equipment is only going to be as fast as the slowest component. So as cameras get higher resolution, higher frames per second, it's often going to be the cards that are the bottleneck. Now that the Nikon Z9 is up to firmware version 2.1 and it's brought in 8.3K RAW 60p to the card, as well as ProRes HQ 4.1K RAW 60p to the card, I wanted to retest and include some of the latest generation cards that have brought speed advancements to see what they can do in terms of stills and which ones can actually support the latest and greatest in video formats. Before I give you all of the results, just a quick word, this video is brought to you by Payboo. Payboo is the store payment card that instantly credits you back the amount of state sales tax on your order, available exclusively at b &H Photo. And all the cards I'm talking about here too, coincidentally, are available all to order at b &H. Now, I put out a guide before that you can download over at learn.mattgranger.com that went through a whole bunch of different cards I looked at, lossless compressed, the high efficiency star and the high efficiency, at 20 frames a second and then looking at some at 15 frames a second. Now I'm redoing them with some of the latest generation cards and including which ones are able to do the two different video formats that I mentioned. So ProRes HQ 12-bit 4.1K 60p and 8.3K NRAW 60p to the card. Now, as heavy as those formats are and the NRAW 8.3K is the heavier of the two, Stills is still the most difficult because there are several cards here that can do both of those recording formats all day without a problem. But then there's none of the cards still that can just shoot at lossless compressed raw 20 frames a second and not buffer. They have a limit. So some will only do 30 frames before they start buffering. Some will do 80, but none of them go all the way and can do it without any kind of buffering. Now, in terms of the cards we're testing, in total I have over 25 on the spreadsheet and I'll be updating that over time as I'm able to get access to more. By way of disclaimer, some of the cards were loaned to me, some were sent to me by b &H Photo, some were sent to me by the manufacturer, some to just test and keep, some to return, but I'm testing them all in exactly the same way. It doesn't matter if it was loaned, given, whatever. The results are the results and that's exactly what I'm giving you here. Now, the new Nikon one, I think, has a lot of people interested because it's been a while since they released their own one. And given that they're doing all of these heavy video files, you've got to imagine they're going to do a card that they have tested and certified is going to work flawlessly, right? Now, just a word of warning, this 660 gigabyte card with a theoretical or a maximum read of 1700 and a maximum write of 1500 is 727 US dollars. And it's actually one of the best value cards that you're going to find in terms of performance and gigabyte per dollar, as hard as that may be to believe. Now, I have had the good fortune, thank you to Angelbird, they've sent me out three different cards to test out as well. There's the 512 SE, which is I think like the standard line, then a 160 gigabyte SX, which is meant to be their fastest for bursts for stills, and then a whopping, this is the card, four terabyte, this is the uh, AV Pro range. These are all Mark II cards. Now, you might think, does it really make a difference? It really does, and in the PDF, I'll be linking to the exact card I've tested. For example, you can go out and get a pro grade that's the best in the pack or the worst in the pack, and it may not be clear because when any of the manufacturers, Nikon, Angelbird, Delkin, Sandisk, say on the box, 
up to 700, 1700 read, up to 1200 write, that doesn't really mean anything anymore because what you're talking about, what is important, is the minimum sustained write and read speed, not the maximum peak because you might get a peak of 1700, but then the actual sustained could fluctuate between 1000 and 1100. So it's the minimum sustained that you have to think about. So there's no point in having a card that'll do a peak that will keep up with 8K video. It has to be able to do that on and on and on. And I can tell you, for example, the Angel Birds generation one to two, there's been a huge leap forward. Now I bought the SanDisk Pro because it, I didn't have SanDisk on the list and so many people asked about it. Given that it's such a big name in the industry, I haven't been able to get one sent out for me to test from anywhere, unfortunately. But I don't think they have done a Gen 2 that is at the latest speed. So once they come out with a, an updated one that's competing with your Dolkins and your Nikons and your everything, I will get that into test as well. But you can go through and take a look at the document to see all of the overall top performers. But let me just tell you the TLDR of which are the best ones if you're really looking for the fastest. Now, let's just say the Nikon. This is, and you might think being a manufacturer's card, I'm guessing this is a rebrand of someone else's card, maybe slightly tweaked in some way, but I wouldn't be so, I would have expected or I wouldn't have been surprised if it was had a 10 or 20% surcharge and performed the same as another card in the pack, given that. I don't think Nikon have the facilities to make their own cards. But I can tell you, in terms of lossless 20 frames per second, this will do 82 shots before it starts to buffer. And given this is 20 frames a second, that means just over four seconds. So not earth shattering, but pretty impressive. Um, and that is equal fastest of any of the cards. In terms of high efficiency star, it will do 424. In terms of high efficiency, at 20 frames, it'll do 1,545. And at lossless, the highest quality at 15 frames a second, unlimited. It will just never stop. And yes, it's all good for both the 8K, 8.3K 60p RAW and the ProRes 4.1K 60p. So a great card. But it's actually not the fastest of the fast, even though it's very impressive. It's still one that I tested way back. Where is it? It's actually the WISE 640 gigabyte Pro card. This one is also getting 82 on lossless, but it gets an extra 55 on high efficiency star and an extra like 700 on high efficiency. So fastest overall. And then it's a brand you may not be familiar with, but I've been using different products of theirs for about a decade. Hoodman, who I think were the first ones to make reinforced steel SD cards before Sony were even doing it. This is the second fastest overall. It's doing 82 in lossless, then 472 in high efficiency star, 1550, so just ahead of the Nikon, but pretty close and unlimited in 15 frames and will do all the video formats. Then it's the ProGrade 325 Cobalt and then the Angelbird 16, 160 gigabyte, uh, rounding out the top five. Two little surprises here that I wanted to discuss though. I am really impressed, this whopping four terabyte card, this is intended really for video, but it is really good for stills. This guy is actually getting 80 frames for the lossless, 471, so more than the Nikon, for high efficiency star, and 1423 for high efficiency, so just less than the Nikon. Yes, this is an 1800 US dollar card, but let's just quickly talk about, you know, the bang for buck. Now, you have to be doing video really, I think, to be considering a four terabyte card. But if you look at the top five, for example, how, what you're getting per dollar, the Hoodman is $199 for 128 gigabyte. The Wise is 640 gigabyte for $780. The ProGrade I tested was 325 gigabyte, but you can get a 650, that's closer, and that is $770. 
and the Angel Bird at 160 is 180 dollars, so pretty good. And the Nikon, which is expensive, is 660 gigabyte for 727 dollars. So of the sub one terabyte cards that are in the top five in terms of speed. It's actually the best value per gigabyte and a size that a lot of people are going to consider. But if you're just thinking about, you know, performance and space per dollar, then the eye-wateringly expensive $1,800 card comes in at the best. And it is actually completely usable for stills, but it's really, I think, a best, better option for video shooters. And just why would you want a four terabyte card? Well, let me tell you. So, in stills, that 4 terabyte card on lossless RAW is going to get you 45.4 thousand shots. 45 thousand shots. Crazy. But in video, if we're doing the ProRes 12-bit 4.1K 60p, that is 1 hour and 56 minutes of recording time in 4 terabytes. And if we switch into the NRAW, and do 8.3K 60p, one hour and 33 minutes. So 93 minutes of recording in four terabytes. Insanity, the amount of space that these things chew up. So if you're doing a production, forget about four terabytes. In a day of filming, you might need 10 terabytes easily on a single camera. So if you're doing a three or four angle shoot, prepare to invest some serious money on your storage. So check it out below, there is a link where you can download the full testing PDF with all the different card results for yourself. You can click through and then also check them out at B&H Photo. Thank you to them for sponsoring the video. And if you happen to be shooting with the Z9 or any of the Nikon Z range, check out my complete expert setup guide. It's an evolving document with every single Nikon Z camera covered with quick setup on how to get the most out of your camera, how to customize it to get you know the best results given the kind of shooting you do. And as new firmware is added and new cameras are added, I'm updating it as well. In fact, I'll be adding the Z30, the new camera that hasn't been released yet, hopefully within the next week or so. You can find out details on that below. Let me know any questions you have, and I'll see you soon.